Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of SketchUp. So we've been looking at tools lately. I wanted to maybe back up or step aside, or I'm not sure what direction we're moving with this, but I wanted to take a look at edges and faces. We kind of talked on them quickly when we talked about lines or polygons or rectangles, but I wanted to look a little bit more at just how to work with edges and faces. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so as usual, we're starting with a clean slate here in SketchUp. And what I wanna do is I wanna start by putting in an edge. So I'm just gonna grab my, my line tool and I'm gonna click and click, and there we go, we get a line, we get an edge. If I pick on it, you can see up here in Entity Info, it tells me it's an edge, it tells me what the length is. Um, that's really all there is to an edge edge. An edge is a line between two points. Pretty simple. That's that's really all there is to it. So one of the things that happens in SketchUp that's unique to SketchUp and doesn't work the same in other drawing tools is anytime an edge touches or crosses another edge, it's going to break it. So if I draw a line from this space out to here, I now have, if I grab a big window, three edges. So this one and these became two separate edges. Same with if I was to draw another line that crossed like this, as long as they cross each other, it's going to break again. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six edges. So I drew three lines and ended up with six edges. That is how edges work. This is important to note because people sometimes ask like, where's my intersect tool or where's my trim tool, something like that. There isn't. It automatically, any time a line crosses, an edge crosses an edge, it breaks. So if I want to trim this line so it edges, it ends right here, I can just pick on it and hit my delete key and it's gone. All right, this is also very important to note how this works if you try to do any manipulation of edges. So if I pick this, this edge right here and I go to say my move tool and I start to move it, look what's gonna happen. Anything connected to the highlighted edge is moving with my cursor. Any edges that connect to the end of it are getting stretched. Likewise, we cover this in move. If I have nothing turned on and I just click move, now I'm gonna grab the end of an edge and move just that. Notice this just stretches anything select connected to that point. So again, if I come over here to this point, now all three edges are gonna move with that cursor. So it's important to note how edges work. It's very uh, unique, like I said, to SketchUp, the way that the intersection process works. Anytime an edge crosses an edge, it's gonna break. So sometimes people go, okay, I'm gonna draw an edge from here to here. Um, no, that was, how, how about from here to here? There we go. And notice that didn't break this piece right here because in 3D space, they didn't actually cross. See, when I did this move, I moved it vertically and that crosses, but not in 3D space. The two pieces don't actually connect. Something to be, be aware of. Uh, a lot of times people will send in drawings looking down from above and they're like, these two cross, but for some reason, this edge won't break. I can't get this edge to break. And that, of course, like I said, is because they're not actually connecting in 3D space. So something else you have the option of is changing how you view edges. I'm gonna get rid of this face because uh, I just wanna talk about edges. And that is using styles. We're gonna dive deeper into styles in another video, but what I did wanna look at right now is if you go to styles and click on the first tab here, it'll bring up your edge properties. In edge properties, there's a couple things you can look at. One of the things some people like to see is endpoints or extensions. Endpoints are gonna give me little bunches, little dots at the end of any of these lines, any of these edges. This is kind of nice because one of the things you can do with a line is I can use this line, I can come across here and I can click on it. And what that'll do is that'll actually break that edge. See that? This is now two different pieces. When I draw an, a line on an edge on top of an edge, draw a line on top of an edge, it's going to break into two edges. This is almost impossible to see unless I know it's there, unless endpoints is turned on. 
So a lot of people, when they get into more advanced modeling, they like to turn edge or those endpoints off. If you're beginning, endpoints are kind of nice because it will tell you where you have breaks in your lines. The other thing is extensions. And sometimes people like to have endpoints and extensions turned on. Uh, again, just to give an idea of where those ends are and how they, how they line up, your call, uh, if you want to use those or not. If you're having a problem where you're getting a lot of broken geometry, you may want to try turning endpoints or extensions on just to see how that works. Um, but like I said, that's up to you. Next, let's look at faces. So to create a face, I am going to go switch my polygon tool to rectangle, and I'm going to draw a rectangle, and I have a face. When a face is first drawn, see how I got that kind of bluish color, this bluish blue-gray? If I look underneath it, I have bright white. The white is the outside face. This blue-gray is the inside face. The reason it draws it face down, so anytime I draw a polygon or a circle or a rectangle, or if I close a face on the ground, the assumption that's made by SketchUp is that the next step you're going to do is use push-pull to pull this up. When I pull this up, then the assumption is correct. This face is the outside face facing down, and what is on the inside now was supposed to be the inside. That's not always true. If I just want this to be a regular face, I can pick the face, right-click, and say reverse faces, and that will get the white facing up and that back face, the blue face, facing down. So if that's what you're looking for, it is simple enough to change that. If I do click on a face, I can see the information up here. So a face, unlike an edge, doesn't have just a single length. It's actually a surface, so it gives me the square area of that face. Faces work very much uh, in the same idea, the same concept the way edges do. So if I was to modify this, if I selected the face and I hit move, for example, any modify command, I'm moving the whole face. If I was to select an edge and click move, now when I move it, I'm stretching the face and actually changing how big that face is as I move it around. So it's important if you want to make a change here, I don't actually have to come in and get all the edges. I don't need all of this selected in order to move this face. All I really need is this piece right here, at which point I can manipulate, move, rotate, scale, whatever, that whole thing. It is important to note that connected geometry will move just like when I move the edge. So if I was to come in here and let's say, let's say push pull this up and now I select this face right here and use move. Everything else that's connected to it is going to stretch with it. See that? Just like moving an edge, the connected pieces are going to move also. That's actually an important point. I'm going to back up a step. I'm going to hit command Z, command Z to get back to my, my one face. Uh, when I push pulled there, I got on all sides nice even faces. See that? All, all single faces. I'm going to undo. If I was to draw an edge in here like this and break that edge, just like with the edge that we had in standalone space, this edge is one piece, this edge is a separate piece. So that means if I push pull right now, I'm going to get a line breaking this face because this original edge was two pieces. And then this new edge on my push pulled face is also two pieces. Not a bad thing, just something to note. So if you created a face using a series of arcs and lines or something like that, you push pull it up and you see these breaks right here, that is just because there was a break in your original edge on that face before you did push pull. Okay, very similar, just one last thing to touch on. Very similar to what we looked at with edges, there is a tab for faces. So if I click over here, I can change the style. How, what do I want to see these faces? Do I want to turn on x-ray to see, the, see through it? Um, do I want to see the edges only? Um, that can be toggled right here inside of the face geometry. Um, like I said, we'll get into styles a little bit deeper in a later video. But right now, know that if there's something where you want to see inside something like that, you can use the styles value to see the x-ray, to actually see inside there, or if I want to change between, you know, if I just want to see like this monochrome view where everything looks the same, uh, that can be sometimes easy, especially if you have a lot of crazy textures or something like that. But that is some basic information about edges and faces. So like I said, we jumped right into tools because 
I was excited about showing tools and people had a lot of questions about them and that's kind of where I tend to go. I noticed that they're getting more and more questions just on the basics like the one front and back faces. That's a big one. If you're modeling for 3D printing or you're exporting your file for something like rendering or anything like that, it is very important to keep those white faces out and those blue gray faces facing in. So right clicking and reversing faces is very important right up front. Just keep that Keep that in mind, you should have those white faces facing out all the time. Do you like that video? Did you learn something? Click like down below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week around here, including one of these square ones every Thursday. You'll be notified of each and every one if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave a comment down below. Like I said, this video is a direct result of your comments, questions, and interaction with you guys. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.